Hey, what's up, people? What's going on? It's the BQF Black Quarterback Forum coming to you. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know how I get down. I know ain't many people watching. <laughs> if, if they wanted to, I don't care. I'm going to make the video, if nothing else, for history and for just to have it out there. Because when one of these black quarterbacks win the Super Bowl, if not this year, which is looking very strongly that it will be a black quarterback, Patrick Mahomes most likely, um, going forward, <clears throat> excuse me, going forward, whenever a black quarterback wins the Super Bowl, I'm going to be there to talk about it. And we're going to have these kind of videos. All right. So y'all know what time it is. The BQF Black Quarterback Forum. Yours truly, Al Taren, A Dizzle, all that. So, you know, <laughs> before I get into the stats and all that, uh, I ain't got my book with me. And, um, <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So no, I know a lot of people's not watching, or a lot of people are not watching these videos. That's okay. I don't care. I'm still gonna make it. But I just wanted to say this week that I know we in week nine, right? By the books, some teams are six and two, eight, some you know, or, or less. But there's only one team seven and all. That's the Chiefs. I'll get to all that stuff in a moment. But what I wanted to say is how they just glossed over the fact that at the start of the season, there were 16 black quarterbacks starting. Okay, we had my man in Carolina, Bryce Young, who's since lost a position. But with him in the NFC, we still had eight. We got eight in a kind of a different way. And I'll go over here in a moment. But when he had a solid eight in the AFC, when we knew Kobe Brissett was probably going to lose that position, and he did, and he got it back because he played this last game because of the cat getting hurt. But there was 16, eight on each side, eight in the AFC, eight in the NFC. Trust me. I know this. <laughs> this is anything. And, you know, I don't watch any of this pre-games. I don't watch any of that crap. I mean, it's just... It's just bullshit, if you ask me. I mean, I don't even need to be told how the team is going to play and all that. I watch the game my damn self. So, I'm not hating on them. I just, <clears throat> I just feel like I don't need to watch that. <laughs> I watch some of them during the week that's leading up to Sunday about them talking about different players and teams. I can read whatever I need to read. But there was no big, how can you say, I'm going to say celebration, but accomplishment announcement of the 16 black quarterbacks starting this and it's been the most ever ever and they're, they're acting like it's been this way all the time and it has this has been the most ever black quarterbacks that have ever started at one time at the season 16 if we have 17 then you know they're never going to talk about it it's just going to be 20 black quarterbacks starting you know we got all the black quarterbacks huh? nobody's saying anything so, and that's what's crazy, right? And the average person don't know. They think, oh, if you're 25 or 30 and you're watching NFL now, it's like, wow, it's always been this way. No, it hasn't always been that way. There's this book where <clears throat> that I've been reading that talks about it, okay? I, I don't <laughs> have a section to go over this week. I'm just slowing down on my read. But anyway, I, it, it was surprising to me. You know, I was talking to a few of my friends who watch the NFL religiously, and they watch all the pregames and all that stuff. I was like, they ain't, no, they ain't talking about that? They're like, no. Because I ain't, I ain't watching none of that stuff. For what? I mean, it's the fan pair. They're going to talk about this team. Got a chance to beat that team. And Look, in the AFC, I'm going to get to all the statistics in a moment, just the black quarterbacks. But in the AFC... The division leaders, Buffalo, because Pittsburgh at the moment, but everybody believes Baltimore going to win that division. C.J. Stroud and them in Houston believe they're going to win that division. And, of course, Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City Chiefs. So those four teams right there are the dominant four in the AFC. Right? Everybody else is playing behind them teams. You can look at those teams and people can talk about Chargers and all these other teams, Cincinnati. And, I mean, really, what <laughs> outside the top six, eight 
maybe you can stretch it to eight in the AFC. I mean, in the East, Buffalo is six and two, and everybody else is two and six, and hanging on and begging and scratching and clawing for a victory, right? I mean, everybody is two and six. I, and ba- Buffalo is six and two. Like, really, they just got to keep winning, which they've done, been doing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, that's a good team. I mean, they ain't got a black quarterback, but they're good. Buffalo. I don't care what they – when the playoffs come, come around, they will be there and they're going to be good. So, when we're looking at Baltimore or Pittsburgh, I mean, who's going to win the division? Baltimore or Pittsburgh? Hmm, what do you think? <laughs> Whoever it is, the other team might make the playoffs, right? <clears throat> you go down to the south with CJ in Indianapolis. How they just – Anthony Richardson maybe did need – to be benched, who knows? Maybe he ain't ready. Maybe you know, because he has been struggling. You've been, I've been looking at his numbers each week, and I'm looking at his. I'm like, man, he has been struggling. So now you sit him down. People getting writing all this stuff online and all this other takes they want to have on it. But I did read some good, interesting stuff. You know about starting these young quarterbacks. So it's interesting. We'll see what happens. But how West? Chiefs, Bron- Broncos are in the second position. Broncos are like five and three. Chiefs are seven and zero. Oh. People trying to knock them off, but they play <laughs> team that Baker Mayfield quarterback. <laughs> Whatever team that team coming to uh, from, <laughs> trying to think of that name. It'll come to me in a moment. Um, <laughs> they go to Kansas City this Monday. The NFL starts up again Thursday night, week nine already. We're week nine. I believe that week nine. We halfway officially halfway through the season. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who I was thinking about. <laughs> I could see it in my mind. It was like Tampa Bay. Say it. So they go to Kansas City. And what's crazy right now, right? I ain't even got to the stats, but I just gotta talk about this. What's crazy with <clears throat> Mahomes and his statistics? He's like, I looked at him, quarterbacks today, he's like, what, 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there, whatever it is. Passing yards, <laughs> he ain't nowhere near the top. Geno <laughs> from Seattle's got the most yards. And Mahomes has got one more interception than he does touchdown pass. Believe that, dude. And what we threw, eight games, seven for them, eight for some other people. They've had a buy. Whatever teams have had buys, it's only seven. And some teams that have played eight, you know, and this is week nine coming up. But, hey, the fact that they wasn't even talking about this is the most black. It's the most black quarterbacks ever started. People act like, no, it's just like black quarterbacks every year. It's fucking, no, it's the most. 16, half the damn league. It's not like this every year. It might be going forward. But it hasn't been this way since, you know, before this year. I mean, hell, it wasn't like this last year. I think it was 15, 10. And then Tua, if they, they still don't count Tua as black. So, I mean, technically, he was only 14. And then this year is 15. But if you count Tua, it was black people do. He's black. You know. It was 16. 16 teams. And they're acting like that's what it's supposed to be. So, I ain't even highlighting my man's jersey. Uh, Caleb Williams. <clears throat> You know, anyway, I'm looking at it. It looks all kind of messed up on my video. But anyway, so we had half the league start. And we had half the league play last year. Some people had to fill in. They came in for players that got hurt. But it was eight in the NFC and eight in the AFC. 16 of the 32 teams, half the league. All right, so let me um get to the statistics here. <clears throat> In the AFC, I'm going to go with AFC first. <laughs> the AFC. And this is, <laughs> he, had, he had the best, uh, he, he, the best day. Yeah, Jameis Winston. <laughs> they beat the Baltimore Ravens, right? <laughs> Ooh, what a game. <laughs> he was 27 for 41. 334 yards. And I look, and that is the most. That is the most 
of the AFC quarterbacks. 334 yards, an 8.1 average, three touchdowns, no INTs. Sacked two times for minus 13 yards. And he had a rating of 115.3. So my man, Jameis Winston, came in and took out the Ravens. That game <laughs> was crazy. Man, I tell you. It, the, betting, I got some friends that bet. I don't bet. I ain't got the money to waste on it. You know, I do other things with my little bit of money that I get. <laughs> but it ain't betting. But the, that game, and these games are unreal, right? Because they, oof, man, they just, they're just crazy. It's just unreal. So, but the losses, they do add up for some of the teams. Like Kansas City don't have no loss. Everybody's chasing after them in the AFC. All right, moving on. Lamar Jackson, he ended up losing that game. He was 23 for 38, 289 yards, 7.6 average per pass, two TDs, zero INTs. He was sacked three times for 26 yards, a one on one point eight quarterback rating. He did rush the ball eight times for 46. You know, I'm, all, I'm always going to talk about Lamar's rushing because he's one of the quarterbacks that's always going to be rushing. So when they ended up losing, it was a tough loss. But, hey, we dropped to second place now uh, behind the Steelers. <laughs> Tua. Tua ended up losing to the, <laughs> to the Cardinals. I'll get to the, a the NFC in a moment. But he was 28 for 38, 234 yards. He had 6.2 average, one touchdown, zero INTs. He was sacked one time for minus seven yards, 97.9. So they ended up losing to the Cardinals. Kyler Murray, moving on. Kobe Brissett, he came in for Drake May and won the game against the Jets. He was 15 for 24, 132 yards, 5.5 average, no touchdowns, no INTs. Sack one time for minus 11 yards, 77.1 average. But he won the game. The Jets are 2-6, and six and so is the Patriots. Here goes my man, Anthony Richardson. He lost to C.J. Stroud. But anyway, he was 10 for 32. Man, that's 175 yards, 5.5 average. One, he had a touchdown, zero INTs. He was sacked five times for minus 35 yards. His rating is 48.3. He did rush six times for 45 yards. But he's got, he's getting benched. He's gotten benched. He is benched. Um, they're talking about Joe Flacco starting. And he will start. And the coach, I did happen to see that little interview um, on TV on uh, one sports show I was watching. So, Anthony Richardson ha hasn't had such great games. He's been struggling a lot. Maybe he just need to sit and watch and see what goes on and see what happens. So, here, because he got rocket on. I mean, the dude's like 6'5", he's or 6'4", whatever, however tall he is. He's just one of these amazing athletes. He's just got a rocket on. He just throw the ball as far as he wants to. He can break out of tackles. He tries to run all the time. So, you can calm down. Let the game come to you. So, I know he didn't play a lot of college football, and I saw an article, someone was making a comment about all these young kids who came in the league who didn't play a lot of college football, and he, it was a long list of people he had, you know, the NFL was getting greedy, just drafting too early, so, it is what it is, and we'll see, and he made a good comment, I did happen to catch his comments that he made, so, you know, we'll see if he sits and learns, Joe Flacco will be starting there, that'd be it. And <clears throat> C.J. Stroud, he was 25 for 37, 285 yards, 7.7 .7 average, one touchdown, no INTs. He was sacked two times, 18 yards, and 99.5 quarterback rating. C.J. won that game. Um, it was a tough game for Houston. They did win, but... We'll see what goes on with C.J. and them as they move along this season. Um, Nico Collins is coming back, I think, another week or so. But uh, the other young, well, I'm about to say young. They are young to me. I'm 60 years old, people. That's right, 6 zero. Uh, my man who came from uh, Buffalo, with his loud mouth, he's out for the season. I can't think of his name at the moment. It goes to my mind here. Uh, it'll come to me at an odd moment. <laughs> And then we have Patrick Mahomes. 
he won. He plays the Raiders. That was a tough game. It's always the Raiders. Always they, whatever they got, they gonna play it and show it against the Chiefs. The Raiders. He was twenty-seven for thirty-eight, two hundred sixty-two yards, six point two not six point nine average per pass. Two touchdowns, one INT. He was sacked one time for minus ten yards, ninety-six point six average. He rushed six times for seventeen yards. So Patrick is. I looked at this quarterback statistics and I didn't get the exact number where he is, but he's like. 15, 16, somewhere down there, 14, 17. <laughs> He's down there. Not in the top 10, for sure, as far as passing. Geno <laughs> has the most yards. I did, I can't recall who comes after him. But Geno has the most yards. It's crazy right now with the quarterbacks. Absolutely crazy. I mean, with those cats, all the cats with the best numbers, they ain't really won nothing. So <clears throat> that includes Geno. So, Russell Wilson finishes out the AFC quarterbacks on that Monday night game. Russ was 20 for 28, 278 yards, 9.9. .9. Average, one touchdown, zero INTs. Sacked four times for negative 19 yards. Had a 114.9 average. Now, Russ, in that game, you know, the, uh, Mike Tomlin, I call him my brother because we did look alike at one point in time. When this wasn't so gray. I mean, yeah, it's, it's gray now. But anyway, um, they're in the first place in that division in the AFC. The North, um, me, like a lot of other people, don't think they're going to hold on to that division. I think the Ravens will eventually get that division. They own a better team, right? And a better quarterback, right? <laughs> when the rest of the team plays with us, right? <laughs> So, uh, I know some wide receivers that went to different teams. I forget. It was just I was just thinking about the receiver that they that they did get to help Lamar. So we'll see how that works out. Getting over to the NFC, Jalen Hurts put it on Cincinnati and he did sixteen times for twenty, sixteen out of oh, for twenty, sixteen out of twenty times. <laughs> he completed sixteen passes out of twenty attempts. 236 yards, 11.8 average, they had one touchdown pass, zero INTs. He was sacked zero times, and his rating was 132.5. 10 rushes for 37 yards, which was three was touchdowns. So I imagine a couple of those touchdowns were probably pretty close. I didn't watch all of that game. I don't be watching the games that much on Sunday. I'm like busy early in the morning. I'm busy. I'm out doing my little Uber runs. I still got to make money. And so I watch what I can when I come in. And, you know, I don't do that thing where you get all the TV on. You know, I can watch it on my phone, but I don't do it on my TV. So, but I did see some of this game. I believe this game was on locally for us early. And they were putting it on the Bengals. The Bengals score early, but. So he one of the better teams in the AFC. And they got everybody when they got them all. All his receivers. You know, so they're, they're pretty good. Obviously, Kyler Murray, he won. He beat the Dolphins. He was 26 for 36, 307 yards, 8.5 average per pass, two TDs, zero INTs, zero sacks. He had a 116.3 rating. He rushed five for 19 times. I'm going to talk about his rushing because we all know uh, he's going to have some yards rushing, scrambling, a little waddle as he does. Jordan Love. And Malik Willis. Because Malik finished the game, Jordan has some kind of injury, minor injury. Don't think it's going to keep him out. But he was 14 for 22, 196 yards, 8.9 average, zero INTs, or excuse me, zero TDs, one INT, sack zero times, but he only had a rating of 73.3. Now, Malik Willis finished out the game. He was four, point, he was four for five, 56 yards. 11.2 average, and he had one touchdown, zero ints. He was sacked one time. He's like no, no yard loss. And his rating was 152.9. It was only like four, five passes, and he rushed four times for 23 yards because he do run from time to time. So but they ended up winning that game. So the Packers are in second place in that division now. 
So we'll see what happens as the, as the year goes on. My man Spencer Rattler. Thank you, Samara. My man Spencer Rattler took another big fat L for the Saints. I think Derek Carr is coming back. They probably think, hey, dang. <laughs> Spencer, he ain't been doing that good. So he was 12 for 24, 156 yards, 6.5 average, zero TDs, zero INTs. Sacked three times for 16 yards, 70.8. Man, I didn't get his rating or nothing. <laughs> My, oh, no, the rating is 70.8. My apologies. <laughs> he didn't rush. He ain't got no other statistics on him, man. <laughs> That's it. Now, the jersey that I'm wearing, Caleb Williams. He didn't lose that game. That was a heck of a game with Jay Daniels. Right, that game. <laughs> I mean, Caleb, we get to the stats in a moment. He, you know, and Jay's. But that game, it, man, <laughs> that's all I can say, right? The way it ended, he just knew the Bears was going to win, but you can't let him run around like that. You got it. Mm -hmm. All right, he was 10 for 24, 131 yards, 5.5 average, zero touchdowns, zero INTs. He was sacked two times for minus 20 yards, 59.5 rate, quarterback rate. And he rushed 10 times for 41 yards. You know, these young guys running around there. Dude. But they lost. The winning quarterback and the best stats in the NFC, Jaden Daniels, 21 for 38, 326 yards, 8.6 per pass attempt yards, one touchdown, zero INT, sacked two times for 13 yards, 92.7. And he rushed the ball. He rushed it eight times for 52 yards, people. Man, it's taking. <laughs> and Geno Smith, they got beat down by Buffalo, man. And Buffalo just uh, put it on him, man. But Geno was 21 for 29, 212 yards, 7.3 average, zero touchdowns, one INT, sacked one time for 11 yards, 78.5. And he did rush the ball five times for 16 yards. Then we have the $60 million man, Dakota Prescott. They lost Sunday evening. That was a Sunday evening game. Sad, man. $60 million. You know what Jerry Jones wants to say? He wants to say nice things now. I mean... <laughs> What else can you say? You're paying him at sixty million dollars a year to lose and to come in third place in your division or fourth or not make the playoffs. Twenty-five for thirty-eight, two hundred forty-three yards, six point four average, two touches, two ints, sacked two times for seven yards. His rating was seventy-nine point eight. So, as we eight people, statistics. That's all the black quarterbacks. Y'all know we talk about the black quarterbacks. None of the white guys out there. I'm just going to say this, right? In the AFC, <laughs> by my lip, I want to say the NFC, but in the AFC, I started out <coughs> going over those, the top four quarterbacks, the division winners at the moment. In the East, he ain't white, but he's black. I mean, he ain't, he ain't black, but he's white, but he's good, and they're with it. Josh Allen, yeah. well, Russell Wilson is the current division winner, but we all think Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens are going to win the division, but at the moment, it's Russell Wilson, black guy, CJ Stroud, Houston, and of course, Russell Wilson, so outside of those four teams, and really, we're going to put Baltimore, because we believe Baltimore is going to win the division, so you know, Russ might make the playoffs, but he's going to lose, and then they could win. But anyway, so those four teams going to be there, period, I think. In the last four games, I mean, the last four teams, maybe, maybe not. I don't, Cincinnati, I just don't see much other teams having the opportunity to be there. So, and then the NFC, it's them up in the air, right? Because you can always say in Detroit, 
they got the best chance maybe to win. But maybe their coach is holding them back with some of his go for it on fourth down anywhere. <laughs> so I or you know the fifty side, you know if you're on the side of the field where it's fifty, you're on the plus side, go for it fourth down. We're, we're not kicking the bell. We're not we're not throwing the bell. I know some of these teams have bad field goal kickers, but I mean when you're when you're in like the forty five in, I think you should just take the field goal if you if you have a good enough field goal kicker. That's just me, old philosophy, right? I'm 60 years old. Get the field goal. <laughs> hey, those three points might come in handy later in the game. Anyway, so, you know, I did write down, <laughs> and, you know, and the two top teams out of each division. So, in the NFC, you got Washington and Philly. Washington 6-2, and two, Philly 5-2. and two. In the north, you got Detroit and Green Bay. They both won. Detroit is six and one. Green Bay is six and two. And then in the south, you got Atlanta. They five and three. And Tampa Bay is four and four. And then in the west, you got the Cardinals currently four and four, and San Fran four and four. So and then in the east, or excuse me, in the AFC, Buffalo, my Buffalo six and two, Miami. When they, everybody else to a six as well. <laughs> so I just put them, they they next on the in in the standings. <laughs> in the AFC North, Pittsburgh is oh, they ended up winning that game last night. They six and two or, or two nights ago. And um Baltimore's five and three. I think about Baltimore losses though. When they came out the gate they lost to San, uh, San Fran. Well, not San Fran, they lost to Kansas City. Okay, we can give them that. And the next week they lose to the Raiders. They were still focused on. They were still thinking about that loss to Kansas City. That's, and then this past loss, this past weekend to the Browns. I the Browns played them tough. I mean, the Browns played the teams in the division tough, right? <laughs> they might not win the game without the better quarterback these days, but they play you tough. The AFC South, you got Houston at six and two, Indianapolis at four and four. And they're going to take that division, right? Ain't nobody going to challenge them for that division. No. And then in out west, you got Kansas City 7-0 and and Denver is 5-3. and So, like I said, in the west, is in the, in the AFC, it's almost written. A couple more games, and these teams are going to be struggling to get back. And you're going to have the top four teams. You're going to still see if Pittsburgh is winning that division. After about another six, seven games, right? We got eight. Uh, this will be week nine, and with seventeen, so it's eight games left for for everybody, eight or nine, depending on if they already had to buy. So we're gonna see where they be at and what teams will be pushing for them playoffs. But here at the BQF, we're going to talk about it every week. I don't care watching the videos, one person, four person, because when a black quarterback win. This is this is history, and this is going to be one of the sounding boards. And I'm one of the few people I know on the regular channels. They're going to talk about everybody, and there ain't a whole lot of black people talking about just the black quarterbacks. People visit the website. I see people going to the website all you know season long. It's all good, but when another black quarterback win the Super Bowl, we done talked about it all season long. Okay, so we'll get at you.